Hey guys, it's Simon from Inclips, and um, today I'm going to be making a really cool card that kind of inspired me by Jennifer McGuire, so go check out her channel if you want to see a video sort of like this. Um, I'm just kind of changing it up a little bit. So let's get started. I'm going to start out with a mini distressing pad. This is the Peacock Feathers pad, and you'll notice that I'm working on just a sheet protector, so if it wiggles around a little bit, that's kind of why. You'll also notice that this kind of looks like the Salty Ocean color, because I kind of share a sponge with this, because I used to use the, I mean, I still use the big blending tools, but now that I have mini distressings, I don't have a foam for every mini distressing color, so I kind of use, you know, to share them, and when it, when um, a store gets the smaller blending tools in, I'll probably go pick up a pack of those, because those will be a lot easier, and you'll notice that I'm getting a couple of streaks in this, um, that's probably just because I'm using a bigger tool and this foam is a little bit worn down um, and things like that, but that's totally okay. So now I'm just kind of going over top of that with the darker salty ocean color and then I'm going to go right back in to that peacock feathers and just fill in some of that space a little bit lighter than before. Really light handed and I'm just going to fill in some of that space in between those blue colors. And so I'm going to be coming back to blue pretty soon, but now I'm going to be going in with Seedless Preserves. This is another mini ink pad, um, and I'm just going to be going in and filling in those little spaces where there was no blue ink, where I just filled in that light peacock feather coat. So I'm just going to be doing this all around my card, again going in with a good blending motion. Um, if you're not really familiar with your blending tool, that's when this card is really good because the colors will kind of just blend on themselves because you're using two um, colors that kind of blend really well. And so they'll kind of just blend on their own. Next I'm going to be using Dusty Concord and you'll notice that my sheet kind of looks like a little bit of a mess right now and the more messy it looks right now, the better it'll look later. So let's just keep going with my card and you'll see that it'll look a lot better a little bit later. So now I'm going to go back in with some Salty Ocean and just kind of blend those two colors together. And this is where it starts looking a little bit better. It kind of gets rid of those strokes you kind of had. And you're going to want to go over that um, Seedless Preserves just a little bit. And you kind of overlap them, and that'll make a little bit of darker purple, kind of navy color in between. It looks really cool, and it'll give you a really cool effect, and it'll also help blend them together if there was any harsh lines in between them. So I'm just going to keep doing that around over any blues, and I'm just going to kind of go into the purple like I was saying. If you think your blue is a little bit too light, I'll show you a trick um, for doing that. But I definitely think that Salty Ocean and Seedless Preserves are the two best colors to do a sky for this. Now, for this part, I'm just going to be kind of going back into that blue now. And I'm going to be making it a little bit darker by just kind of going over it. Just with, again, a super light motion like I did that Peacock Feathers with. And it'll give you just a little bit darker of a color over top of that. You'll notice that I'm switching sponges a lot in this video. I do have two ink blending tools so that I can switch, you know, if I'm doing a two-colored background really easily. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing is, you probably have seen um, Jennifer McGuire do this a lot. I mixed Perfect Pearls into water, and I put it in a little spray bottle. So now it's going to be pearlized water. All you're going to want to do is just shake um, this bottle a ton because you're going to want no pigments to be on the bottom. Once you see that there's no pigments, you're good. And so now I'm just going to spray this to the side once, and I'm going to keep the trigger held down. And I'm going to go about one foot above, and I'm just going to keep going up and down with that trigger, not fully spraying the nozzle, though. Um, just going to get little dribbles on there. And you're going to want to hold it from pretty high above to kind of get, you know, you're going to want some bigger dribbles and some really little ones. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go even higher above and just give it one big spritz. Next, you've probably seen Diane Reevely do this a lot. I'm going to just take a paper towel roll and just roll it right over my project. That'll just get rid of any water that is sitting on the surface of that um, distress ink, and that should be good. If you want even more shimmer and shine, you can do the exact same thing. Go in it again, and just you can go even closer, um, but um, to get a little bit more shimmer and shine. And then all you have to do is again go in with a paper towel roll and just wipe that right off. 
Now I'm going to be removing my uh, little sheet protector that I was using to do that inking on, and I can set this piece aside now. Now I'm just going to be working on this little strip. This is a 1 fourth an inch strip, um, and so let me show you what I'm going to be doing with this. I have this little stamp. It says, it's your birthday in little font. Now, you're not going to really be able to find this stamp anywhere because um, at Joanne, I found it at Joanne, and it was a like one of those Studio G stamps, but it was with another stamp. I forgot what it said. It was like, OMG, it's your birthday, and I liked the it's your birthday, but I hated the rest of the stamp. It was in really large font, and I didn't really like to stamp well because it's not the best quality stamp. And so I just cut it down into it's your birthday, and it makes a good greeting for any card. Especially if you want a smaller greeting just to focus more on the background, that's another great way to do it. So then I'm just going to be taking away, I mean, I'm going to be taking out my embossing powder, and I'm just going to be using a little... Um, Yo Mama spoon to kind of scoop this embossing powder on here. I found that this strip was a little bit large, so it was kind of hard to sprinkle this embossing powder on top of it, but I did get the job done, so. Um, I was quite happy with the results of that embossing. <sighs> and I'm just going to blow on it a little bit to make sure that nothing is sticking anywhere. And if you do think that anything is sticking on the sides, I'll just go in with a smaller paintbrush and I'll just kind of brush that little embossing powder off and that'll make a cool card. So now I'm just going to go to the side and let my heat gun heat up. And now that that's all heated up, uh, I kind of think I missed a little bit. Let me just... Okay, there we go. Now it looks all nice and bright white. Now that I have that all done, I can then pull back in my background and um, put this strip kind of on here like this. I'm going to actually be adhering this with some glossy accents. This is the Ranger Glossy Accents. I use this on a lot of my cards, and it also is an adhesive of my choice. It is a very strong adhesive. There's also um, Ranger Matte Multimedium, which will dry matte. I don't have that, but I've heard that it was really good by some people. And since it dries matte, it is a good adhesive, some people say, because it will not ooze out. Um, and I kind of think that's true, but Glossy Accents is definitely my adhesive of choice, so I use this quite a bit on almost every project that I do. I use some Glossy Accents. So now I'm just going to be bringing in my Tim Holtz little mini tonic snips, scissors, and I'm just going to be cutting off these little things. And what I really like about these little tonic Tim Holtz scissors is that they can resist cutting adhesive, because I used to use um, sticky scissors where it would not be able to withhold adhesive on it, and it wouldn't do very good for me. So I'm just going to be um, tightening that cap back on and waiting for that adhesive to dry. Next thing I'm going to be doing is using some the Paper Studio Gemstones. I got this from um, Hobby Lobby, I believe, and I'm going to once again be using glossy accents. I don't know why I shut that, but I'm going to be using some of these gemstones on my project today. Now, they are self-adhesive gemstones, but I found that the adhesive on them is a little bit messy if you actually try to use their, their adhesive that they provide you with. So, I'm just going to be using glossy accents. Like I said before, it is my adhesive of choice, so I use it a ton on just projects like this. Now, I'm going to want to make sure to add these kind of in um, odd numbers because everything looks better in odds. I kind of keep that rule in the back of my head just because I know that, um, you know, that's kind of one rule of card making is that you should really put things in odds because it kind of is more pleasing to the eye to see things in odds than evens because... Um, 
I don't know exactly why that is, but putting things in odd numbers instead of like pairs or things like that is going to be a little bit better for you. Now I'm just going to be adding things, um, adding little gemstones to my card just in odd numbers, like I said before, using some glossy accents. This is kind of the boring part of this whole entire card. It's just adding the gemstones at the end, but it really makes a finishing touch. So, um, it's just kind of the embellishment on this card. Because this card is so plain and simple, adding gemstones is definitely a good idea because you don't want it to be almost too plain. You want there to be something to catch the eye. And that gemstone, these gemstones are really going to do that. But if you want a card that's going to really focus on your background, you're going to want, you know, something else to kind of embellish it as well. You're not going to just want your background unless if your background is like something that you drew or something like that. If it's like a really inky background and you really want to just kind of showcase that on your card, you're going to want something to kind of complement it. And I find that these gemstones really do the job as complementing them. So I find that if you ever get a little too much adhesive, I just kind of set it onto a rag and then I place it under my surface and it just pulls off some of that adhesive so that it'll stick without oozing out. Because like I said before, you know, matte medium is really good because it kind of, if it oozes out, it's matte so nobody's going to be able to notice that. Well, that's not the case with glossy accents because they are glossy and if they ooze out, they'll just be able to show really well. So now I'm going to be flipping this over and I'm going to be taping this um, onto another surface using a tape runner. Um, so I'm just going to be adhering this to a black piece of cardstock. This colorful piece of cardstock that we just did is um, three and three fourths inches by five inches, and then that black piece is only um, that black piece is um, five and one fourth inches by four inches. And then all I'm going to be doing is just adding even a little bit more adhesive on this. And then just adhering that to a, a two-sized side folding card. And I just pre-folded that uh, just so that it would be a little bit quicker. And so I hope you guys really enjoyed this simple um, card that we made today. Just to add a little bit extra of detail on the inside, you could always re-stamp these stars in some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. So I'm just going to show you how to add even a little bit more interest to it. Um, so I'm going to just take some stars because, you know, it kind of was a galaxy-themed card, except I didn't add stars to the background. I didn't think that they were necessary. So I'm just going to add them to the inside of the card and... Again, stamping things in odds are going to look a lot better and more pleasing to the eye. So I'm just going to be stamping these in odds as well. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching my um, first video on my channel. I hope you guys really enjoyed and are looking forward to some more card tutorials in the future. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and have an amazing day.